Will you please join me in the call to worship? Who then can separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble do it or hardship or persecution or hunger or poverty or danger or death? That was found in Romans 8, verse 35. And now the first hymn of the day is Great is Thy Faithfulness. And you can find it in your United uh, Methodist Hymnal on page 140. Gracious Lord, the uncertainty of life raises questions that haunt our souls. Thank you for being with us with your active love in our lives. As we receive your care, we also claim your peace that you have all the answers. Prepare us to receive this clarity. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, the moment for the young and the young at heart. Now, a moment for the young and the young at heart. I would just like to delight in celebrating all that we have received in light of blessings. Blessings, you might say, especially with the rains that have affected our land and some of it has caused some flood damage or even snow damage. Well, yes, first of all, we have been praying for rain for a long while in light of the droughts that we've been having. And so we can always look at it in a way of how we can count our blessings and see even in the midst of things. First of all, we are thankful so much for the blessing of rain because we need it so much in our land. And the blessing that it has helped refresh the earth uh, with not only in this part of the country, but in all over. We also recognize that we're in the middle of what is a natural part of the seasons that are going on with regards to the weather. We are now in the middle of winter, which is but natural for it to be cold 
and wet and wintry and more thankful for that. We're also looking at other blessings that tie in with what we have received. For example, the blessing that our fire season has now been delayed because of this. Remember when last year there were already fires at the beginning in January? Well, we don't have to worry about that now. And also the protection that is given in light of all that is there with the water that we have. We're also blessed to, to know too, the anticipation as what persons have described of the beauty of the wondrous abundancy of wildflowers that will be growing because the earth has been so nourished with so much rain and snow. So many things to think about. And not just in life that we see it, but also life that we have with the loved ones that care and love for us, with the blessings of God's grace as He gives us life, and the opportunity for us to show kindness to other people. So, even when we face trying times, and we will face those trying times, know that God continually loves us, gives us so many blessings, and gives us the opportunity to share those blessings with others. Amen. Let us pray together. Most loving and wonderful God, thank you so much for the blessing and opportunity to be able to speak to you, to know that you are listening and that you are our God and that we are your people. Thank you so much that it includes your continued love and care and grace always within our lives. We are also thankful, Lord, for the celebration of life as we celebrate Bob and Loretta's great-grandson, Carson Johnson, we thank God for the blessing of his life and the blessing of his parents, Daniela and Todd, and would pray for this young family as they delight in the nurture of this young child. We all also thank you, Lord, for the blessing of hearing our prayers and we can come to you as we are, even with the struggles we face in life. Lord, we pray for those who are in constant hopeless situations. And today we would commit unto you those who are in constant pain, uh, and whether that pain be physical or emotional, that, Lord, you know what's going on, and in your grace and mercy, we ask and plead for your healing and relief for those who are facing that situation. Lord, we also pray for those who are needing your extra tender loving care, dealing with various health concerns, and these persons we lift up unto you at this time. For August Seymour, for David Tucker's dear friend, Kimri, for Shannon and Liam Gad, for Trish Timmons, for Linda Jones, for Don Phillips, for Jan Youngren, for Bill Fisk, for Glenn Graham. Lord, we are also praying for those who are in that transition between life and death and are praying for them and their families at this time as well, committing them unto you. We thank you for those who are in the front lines, such as those in hospice and palliative care, providing that relief and comfort for those who are in that transition and for their families. Lord, we also pray for the transition of those families that have faced the realness of death, and we lift up these, the families of these persons at these times. We pray for the families of Kelly Prater, Nana Johnson, Elsie Burgess, Bob Ward, Darla Ballard. We pray for others and are committing unto you our dear friend, uh, Heather Bromberg, and a friend over a recent loss that they've had in their lives. Lord, we would also pray for your grace in light of the realness that we are still in that season where uh, anyone can be sick is susceptible and are claiming your grace for those who might be suffering or susceptible to other colds or flus even COVID and any other respiratory diseases. Lord, we would also pray too that the uh, rain and the weather changes have brought about allergies and your grace upon those who have to suffer seasonally every year with regards to this. Thank you so much for the blessing of both prevention as well as treatment to make uh, our lives better physically in light of um, the realness of getting sick. Lord, we would also claim your grace in light of the violence that we still see around our world. We would continually pray and earnestly plead for what is going on uh, in terms of some resolution in the war in the Ukraine. We also claim your grace, O Lord, in the resolution of any 
sort of violence and also the healing of such violence that has happened recently within our land around the world and here locally at home. We would also pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ that you would bless them as they for those who are in situations where you are not welcome and that they're facing constant persecution some of which which is violence and that you would bless our brothers and sisters that they might shine forth truly as a persevering light in light of all that is going on help us too lord not to take the blessings that we receive in this country and in other places around the world not for granted as we can share and be able to express our religious beliefs as well and and do this openly lord we would also pray for anyone who are facing major life changes we think of our students as they wind down the new year or their school year in light of uh, all the requirements needed for moving up in their grades especially for those who are graduating we pray for the transitions that they'll be facing upon graduation and beyond. We would pray truly it is a commencement for them as they finish up their, uh, their education uh, and their level of education. We pray for any others that are going through transitions in life of which there are turning points, of which they're saying where they would go, what they would do. We would pray for those within our own church system that are meeting the realness of appointment changes, both for churches as well as for pastors. Lord, we would also pray that you would re reassure us as well as give us the openness of what are the possibilities that you see us doing or being as your church. Open us not only with the conviction of your spirit, but also the blessing of courage, that if there are doors that are opening, for our opportunity that we would be able to courageously go through it knowing that you are with us. We would also pray for your continued blessing upon our travel and continued traveling mercies as, still, as we are still dealing with uh, the weather and including the aftermath of which we are thankful so much for those who are in relief and response to any um, things that go along within our roadsides as far as making the places that we pass through safe for anyone in their comings and goings. Lord, in your mercy, we would also pray for our ministry plans of being your church. As we come into spring, we are excited with the possibilities that they're at. We're looking forward to the blessing of Holy Week and the celebration of Easter. And may it be one where we talk about and think about resurrection from death, that we'd also bring about the death of our own complacencies and our own weariness and just commit them and bring them unto you. Grant new vision as well as new inspiration in our lives through the power of your Holy Spirit that we might know what to do and be as we face whatever challenges we have, knowing always, always that you are with us. Keep us mindful of your return, making most of these times to give kindness and to share your love and grace. Other concerns we lift up unto you in this moment of solemn silence. All these things and more we commit unto you, O Lord, in the wonderful name of Jesus, who told us to boldly and confidently pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
is found in Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 15. When John the Baptist heard in prison about the things that Christ was doing, he sent some of his disciples to him. Tell us, they asked Jesus, are you the one John said was going to come? Or should we expect someone else? Jesus answered, go back and tell John what you are hearing and seeing. The blind can see, the lame can walk, those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases are made clean, the deaf hear, the dead are brought back to life, and the good news is preached to the poor. How happy are those who have no doubts about me. While John's disciples were leaving, Jesus spoke about him to the crowds. When you went out to John in the desert, what did you expect to see? A blade of grass bending in the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed up in fancy clothes? People who dress like that live in palaces. Tell me, what did you go to see? A prophet? Yes, indeed. But you saw much more than a prophet. For John is the one of whom the scripture says, God said, I will send my messenger ahead of you to open the way for you. I assure you that John the Baptist is greater than anyone who has ever lived. But the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. From the time John preached his message until his very day, till this very day, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violent attacks and violent men try to seize it. Until the time of John, all the prophets and the law of Moses spoke about the kingdom. And if you are willing to believe their message, John is Elijah, whose coming was predicted. Listen then, if you have ears, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lori, for the reading of God's Word. For this Lenten season, 2023, we've been making a list of commonly asked questions by young children. Already mentioned were, are we there yet? Why? What's that? And do I have to? Adding this list could include, are you for real? And are you sure? It seems that such commonly asked questions by kids are still asked by adults, even at our age. Curiosity, recognized with asking questions, continues to be a basic part of our lives today. The Bible also asks questions relevant to our lives. Throughout our season of Lent, we will be exploring a few of those questions with hopes that some of those thoughtful answers would bring us even closer to God. Two question asking experiences are a theme of guiding questions. The first one is in the book of Genesis, in the familiar story when God had asked Abraham to sacrifice his beloved son Isaac as a burnt offering. Here in Genesis 22, 7 through 8, Isaac wondered, the fire and the altar are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. And from Jesus' ministry, when he came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Among the answers included John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and others still might be Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then Jesus asked them, But who do you say that I am? Let us pray. O oh Lord, we pray and thank you for the working of your Holy Spirit in our lives, also for the blessing of being able to ask questions, knowing that you hear those questions and in your great timing you will respond. Thank you so much of how this moment will bring us closer to you and to one another. In Jesus' name, Amen. In asking questions, the setting and circumstance play a role. Just like 
when y is asked why, answers basically are just reasons about the way things are. The overall hope is for a better understanding of a specific situation. The hope is that the one answering the why question knows enough to get a satisfactory answer. Some why questions asking can be very intense and emotional. Some questions are asked usually in a crisis and at times aimed at looking at a person of responsibility to place blame. Interestingly, one of the questions that is a philosophical mystery being asked all the time is why do good things happen to, or why do bad things happen to good people? And even the reverse, why do good things happen to bad people? We can also say it another way. Why does God let this happen? Why, and there usually is a context of blaming God in light of all this, when the other response should be, why does God allow such many blessings that we enjoy and appreciate? Things to think about when we think about a balance when it comes to asking questions in a crisis situation. Our Bible describes such a crisis. It is a story of John the Baptist. You remember John. In fact, what is interesting is that other than the birth of Jesus recorded in the Gospel of Luke with some stories in the Gospel of Matthew, John the Baptist's story, which begins in Luke, uh, the first chapters there, uh, tells about his own birth. In fact, it is interesting to notice that in all of the New Testament, while there are a lot of births and growing up that has been mentioned in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, there are only two of which births are recorded and detailed at length. They are Jesus and John the Baptist. And interestingly enough, they're focused only in the Gospel of Luke, the first two chapters. It is interesting and helpful to know that one of the aspects of the Christmas storytelling when it comes to the birth of Jesus also includes the reminder of some of the supporting cast, as it were, that being John the Baptist and his parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth. It is helpful to know, as we think of the background of John, of how even before he was born, he was already destined to be one to play a significant role in the ministry of Jesus and as a prelude of what Jesus' work would be doing. He did this at the start of his ministry, which was a little bit before Jesus, of a unique baptism ministry in the Jordan River and its banks. What it was, was his message was clear. Repent of your sins, repentance make a turnaround of your sins, and as a showing a physical evidence and testimony of making that repentance, there was the act of baptism, that of using water to be symbolically a cleanse as well as a new life of coming in and out of the water with regards to a confession and repentance of sin and a, a way of turning around a new life. It is helpful to see that this was notable in Jesus' own ministry when Jesus came to be baptized by John. I'd mentioned in several uh, weeks before about how this baptism, even though John baptized on the context of repentance, since Jesus did not need to repent, it was an affirmation of what Jesus was to be doing in this world, one to be intervening to accept our confession and repentance of sins and the act of Jesus being baptized was to show that he would identify with us in light of his ministry. That was the highlight of John's ministry. As Jesus' ministry grew and John's was not as influential as it was, it was helpful to see John's perspective his perspective when confronted by his own disciples of why Jesus was having more of the limelight than him, he said those wonderfully profound words, which in fact is a life verse for me from John 3.30, 
Jesus must become greater and I must become less. Or in other words, Jesus must increase and I must decrease. John's ministry continued even as Jesus continued on gaining more influence and more notoriety and popularity in the places that he traveled. However, John's ministry is stop, was stopped when he was arrested. Now, interestingly enough, in the research of this passage, which is in chapter, Matthew chapter 11, a backstory, as it were, is recorded in chapter 14 of Matthew of what happened. And here's what it is, beginning with verse 3 uh, until 9. For Herod had earlier ordered John's arrest and had him tied up and put in prison. He had done this because of Herodias, his brother's brother Philip's wife, so basically his sister-in-law. For some time, John had told Herod, it isn't right for you to be married to Herodias. And so there was a little bit of love triangle drama that was going on here with the king and his brother's wife. Because of this, Herod wanted to kill him but he was afraid of the Jewish people because they considered John to be a prophet. It is in this situation, with John already in prison, that he asked the question. And it's about asking whether the one in whom he baptized, the one in whom he proclaimed at the very beginning, the Messiah, the one who would save the world, is truly the Messiah. Now let's pause a moment to think of John's situation. Here he was, one who had a wonderful ministry. All of a sudden he gets thrown into prison and basically forgotten. Surely he must have thought while he was in prison that Jesus, knowing about what had happened to John and knowing that he had been proclaimed as the Messiah, would bring about the freedom, bring about some sort of rescue as it were, for John in light of his incarceration. That, however, did not happen. And so, I'm sure while he stayed in prison, he was wondering, why, why are these things happening to me? And why God isn't responding? Can we see similarities of that in our own lives? Why, does, why doesn't God answer my prayers? Or why did God let this happen? Or, why are these, why, or to put it another way, why is evil allowed to continue when we know that we have the victory in Christ Jesus, even over death? These are the questions we have, even in the, in the midst that our lives are still tainted and stained with the realness of sin in the world. And yet, we still live and go on. Even though we are battered and worn, we are also a changed people because of the loving and saving grace of Jesus Christ. And it is in this that we are encouraged. It is also a blessing to know that the Bible is so real when it comes to the realness of life with both its beauty as well as its ugliness. It's healing in as much as its pain and then it's healing once again. It's confusion as well as its clarity. And so this is all that we look at in light of being a people of God. Is it any wonder also that our own faith, that of the Christian faith, is based as its symbol, not of some beautiful things like flowers or mountains, but the cross. The cross of wherein Jesus himself, and identifying with people, sacrificed himself for our sake that we might live. It is this mystery of suffering that God would take on our behalf, with, which also shows to us that we, for those who follow him, for those who call themselves disciples of Jesus, are also those who would know that we would also go through those trials and sufferings. There is, however, a blessing in the midst of that. The blessing began when Jesus said to his disciples, as he was warning for warning them of his death, from John 14, 27. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. Note that this was before his arrest 
suffering and later on crucifixion and death in their very eyes. And so these words, though hard when they, when they heard it, would bring about at least that sense of reminders and comfort even during that horrific time of Jesus' death. Later on, the Apostle Paul writes these encouraging words. Don't be worried about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking Him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. And that is in Philippians 4, 5, and 6. Or actually, 6 and 7. And then you might say, how do we go on? How are we able to move on in light of the peace that we have? We're able to move on by what we declare by faith. The writer of Hebrews declares this in chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. In other words, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Now, we are drawn in the realness that even though we may not see, we do believe. It is any, any wonders that our prayers that we do every Sunday are with the hopes that while we do not see the, the cessation of hostilities that are going on, or the timing of healing that will take place, or the realness when Jesus will return, we still hope with the faith that yes, it will happen. It is sad to say that the ending of John while he was in prison did not go well. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herod Herodias danced in front of the whole group. Herod was so pleased that he promised her, I swear that I will give you anything you ask for. At her mother's suggestion, she asked him, Give me here and now the head of John the Baptist on a plate. The king was sad, but because of the promise he had made in front of all the guests, he gave the orders that her wish be granted. Note that earlier, Herod actually wanted John dead, but in the manner of how he would be killed because of this request would truly be tragic. And so, he beheaded John in prison. So, we might wonder, was John's prayers answered in light of his death? Of course, it grieved Jesus and his disciples and all those who mourned the passing of one who had done such a great ministry. But we know also that even beyond this life, there was the promise of life beyond life eternal. This brings to mind the blessing that we do, at least for this time of year, in our call to worship, when we ask the question, if anything in life or even death can separate us from the love of Jesus. I would invite you, because the answer is at the end of our service in our benediction, that when we say it together, that you not only just say them as they are written, but affirm that in your life, that truly nothing, neither life nor death, or anything in all creation can separate us from the love of Christ, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Is it any wonder that from a musical comfort, one of the most favorite hymns that is used is that from our own hymnal, that of the hymn of promise. Listen to these words. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life, eternity, in our death, a resurrection, at the last, a victory, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. 
know this, that at points in our lives, it's okay to doubt. But I've been encouraged by the words, and I've probably mentioned this before, never ever doubt your beliefs or believe your doubts, especially when we have the reassurance of God's love and presence that is with us. We are also encouraged that it is this reassurance, it is this confidence that is called by God and with all that is going on, when we even may have that doubt of wondering why things are or if Jesus is for real and are wondering and being sure in light of what we might go through life, know in confidence of God's peace, that continued faith in God and that love that will never be separated from us and it is this love that we are encouraged to be building relationships in an ever-changing world that lasts for eternity. By God's grace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior that is with us. Amen. Please join me in the invitation to the offering. From God's generous giving, we have received so much. So now, out of gratitude and love for God, let us cheerfully give unto God. Our musical offering is I Will Cast All My Cares. God, for your love and grace most seen in the giving of your Son, Christ Jesus. In presenting this offering along with our lives, bring us closer to you that we may be used to fulfill the bringing of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing song is, O oh Lord, Your Tenderness, and it's in the faith we sing hymnals on page 2143.
tenderness, melting all my bitterness. O oh Lord, I receive your love. We are blessed in being the Mariposa United Methodist Church as we have worshiped God together even through this YouTube. Thank you so much for your ministry of presence as we've delighted in God's presence that is not only with us now but always. We also have the blessing of our in-person worship service Sunday mornings at 9.30. We also have the blessing of, of ministry through our giving with our missions offering this month being towards the relief efforts of, that, of the places that had received had, had earthquakes in Turkey and other surrounding nations. And we are doing this through UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, which is the first responder uh, relief agency of our church that goes out into those places. I would dare say that they've even gone out to places that have been uh, ravaged by the winter storms that we've been having in various parts of the country. Again, thank you so much also for your prayers in light of all those who have suffered in the midst of the weather changes and natural disasters that we've had recently. The other thing also is be in prayer as we prepare. We are just two weeks away from the start of Holy Week, which begins on April 2nd with Palm Passion Sunday. And so start planning your calendars about opportunities of being in worship or participating in worship through our YouTube or in person for our Holy Week uh, events. And more will come in just a moment as well. Also know for those who are uh, authors or writers, you're welcome to contribute to the Spire and the deadline of submission of articles is this Tuesday, March 21st. To a lot of other ministries that are going on as we come into the delight of all that we receive with rain and snow in helping our drought stricken land but at the same time the blessing of spring and the new hope that it brings with new life god is with us all amen will you receive the benediction for i am certain that nothing can separate us from his love neither death nor life neither angels nor other heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present nor the future, neither the world above nor the world below. There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. By God's grace. Amen. Where will we go and who will we be? We go out into the world to be God's children, to build relationships in an ever-changing world that lasts for eternity. Amen.
Ooh. Mm -hmm.